We're back aboard car 19 in the collection of the Lake Superior Railroad Museum at the temporarily closed St. Louis County Depot here in downtown Duluth. Thank you for joining us today for another one of our episodes, our behind the scene tours, as we are closing in on our 100th episode. Who knew this was going to last so long? Well, anyway, thank you for being very loyal and for sharing these with all your friends, relatives, neighbors, and that cranky old guy down at the corner. We do appreciate it. You know, we're back on board car number 19 to tell you the story of all of this. You know, we often talk about why we're here because of the steel and the iron ore. We're here at the Lake Spear Railroad Museum mainly because of one person who always said there will be a railroad museum in Duluth, Minnesota. He had a commanding presence. Whenever he entered a room, he brought confidence with him. He exuded it. It didn't hurt that he was tall and had a commanding presence, but what he really had was a foresight like none other. Don Shank wanted only one thing in his life, and that was to be the president and general manager of his hometown railroad, the Duluth, Masabi, and Iron Range. Born in Duluth, Minnesota, he achieved that goal of becoming vice president and general manager from 1964 to 1981. It was during that time that there was a great change going on in the DM&IR. Of course, passenger service was coming to an end, the dieselization was completed, and of course iron ore changed from raw iron to taconite. And Don Shank was there for all of it. His greatest legacy though was an idea he had back in the late 1960s to start a railroad museum and find a place to put it when he came up with the idea of the St. Louis County Heritage and Arts Center. We're in the lobby of the St. Louis County Depot, formerly known as the St. Louis County Heritage and Arts Center, the inspiration of Donald B. Shank and others who worked to turn this historic building into an arts, culture, and history center. In the 1960s, railroads were discontinuing their passenger service prior to the arrival of Amtrak, and depots were abundant across the country, and railroads were looking to get rid of them. The question is, what do you do with them? Well, they came up with the idea of an arts, culture, and history center. A community center in an old depot supported by what Don Shank said. Someday there's going to be a railroad museum in Duluth, Minnesota. Having that world-class railroad museum as the draw for people to pay attendance helps support arts, culture, and history in our community. That was their genius idea. It was Don Shank working with the Junior League Frank King, Wayne Olson, Leo McDonald, and Shirley Swain that came up with this novel approach, repositioning the old historic depot as an arts, culture, and history center. And with the help of federal funding, they were able to do just that. And when it opened as an arts, culture, and history center in 1973, it was on the front cover of Time magazine. As vice president of the Duluth Masabi and Iron Range Railway, of course, Mr. Shank had connections all through the railroad industry and it was time to start building his dream of a railroad museum here in Duluth. Originally called the Lake Superior Museum of Transportation, later we focused on what we really are, a train museum. But Don's idea of collecting was rather unique. He had friends all over the industry because he was so likable. And what he would do is he'd call his friends who were the champions of the industry at the time and say, hey, I'm starting a railroad museum. Find the oldest thing you've got on your property, fix it, paint it, and send it to me. That was how the collection was formed. And because of that uniqueness, we have a regional flavor. We have more equipment that operated in this area than across the country, which gives us a very specific theme to the collection of the museum. And that's what makes it so unique. By happenstance, but very special. And that's why USA Today voted the Lake Superior Railroad Museum as the best transportation museum in America something we're very proud of and work very hard to live up to. Don would be proud, I hope. He liked all things railroad and trains, and so much so that at his summer home on Lake Esquagama, on Minnesota's glorious Iron Range, he had his own little railroad. Here's a couple pictures. It's an electric trolley, probably built in the shops of the DM and IR, with maybe some leftover equipment, who knows, but it ended up at his lake place up in Esquagama, and the kids loved it. And where is it today? Well, you know, it's in the collection of the Lake Superior Railroad Museum. 
and Misha will tell you all about it. This is the train house at Don Jake's cabin. This is the throttle. This is the brake. This is the bell. Thanks, Misha, for the tour. As you can see, Don Shank's little train is in front of all the big trains that he saved in the Lake Superior Railroad Museum for posterity. And it's a welcoming thing to have people come from the parking lot, see the little train. Kids love it, which is why we had Misha show it to you. And as you can see, we're getting ready to open up for the season, which we'll be getting on July 1st. Train tickets are available at DuluthTrains.com. The museum will be open as well. And the museum is open because our founders had a vision. And the vision was multi-level. Arts, culture, and history. The Duluth Ballet is here. The Minnesota Ballet. The Duluth Playhouse. The Duluth Superior Symphony Orchestra. Matinee Musicale. Arrowhead Corral. St. Louis County Historical Society. And a world-class train museum. Because Don Shank wasn't thinking about next week or next month. He was thinking, what will this be like for all of posterity? And we're hanging on to that legend because Don Shank always said there'd be a train museum in Duluth, Minnesota. Now you come and see us. In the meantime, wash your hands, cover your coughs, don't touch your face, keep social distance always, and then remember, take care of each other.